Hello, young people, pornographers, and paedophiles. <laughs> Welcome to my tubes. Hey, Good. Now, I'm going to address, first of all, those of you who've been going around for the last couple of weeks flapping your lips like lips in a wind tunnel. Long, long lips. It doesn't matter, doesn't matter. You've been saying, how can you still be an MP? You said you were standing down at the general election. And I say this. I did stand down. I stood down as Labour MP for Buckland and Ruttington, and I stood as the Conservative candidate, and won. Fair and square. The people of Buckland and Ruttington demanded change, and change they got. We had to sweep out the old Labour ways with corruption and expenses claims, and no one having their voice heard, which they had under me. And now, under me, they've got a real chance at something new with a new, vibrant, Conservative... Liberal Democrat Coalition Government. Anyway, David Cameron is just now, of course, finalising the Cabinet, getting all the junior ministers in place, so uh, the phone could ring any time. <laughs> any time. I'm just going to check I've got reception here. I'm not... I mean... It says it's got four bars, but that's is that good. I, th I think it's probably you don't know with these things. You never know. Any time. Anyway, I thought I'd talk to you today about uh, the new coalition government's plans for constitutional reform. And the thing to remember about all of this is that it's your fault. You voted, all of you voted for a hung parliament. Now, some of you may not remember that option being on the ballot paper. Some of you may say, oh no, I voted for a weak minority government that would fall after six to 18 months and have to have another election to give some sort of credibility to the whole process. But no, we've looked at the papers and we've decided no. No, that isn't what you voted for. You didn't want that. What you did want was an opportunity not to vote for another half a decade. You wanted fixed term parliaments to bring, you know, stability. Stability is very important, very, very important. Much more important than technical details like who got how many votes or seats or what the electorate think. I mean, the electorate are, you know, as if you're, are you, you've all proven. Pretty much idiots. Some people would say that it's blatant corruption that we're changing the rules of the House of Commons, that you only need 45% of MPs to get rid of a, a vote of confidence and sustain an unpopular government. Some people are saying that that's a conservative tactic. That's not a conservative tactic. We don't have 45% of the MPs. We have 47% of the MPs. So we would win under, you know, any of the systems. Apart from, you know, the current one. The most important thing to remember about all of this is that this will sort out the sort of hideous problems we had under the truncated parliaments of 1997 to 2001 and 2001 to 2005 which we tried to squash five years worth of stuff in, into four years and we can spend that extra time that extra 11 months we could spend that doing the work of government um, making laws administering administration collecting government salaries these are all the sorts of things you can't do in four year parliaments <laughs> you know th th there's a lot to be done in the House of Commons without being distracted by irrelevant nonsense like elections. We're also, of course, we're going to have to streamline the House of Commons. We're going to have to reduce the number of MPs by about 10, 10%. Now, there are some of you who will be saying, uh, sorry, um, isn't it, isn't my vote worth less then if the constituency size has got bigger and I've still got the one vote? That's one vote out of 80,000 rather than out of 60,000 making my vote worth less. Uh, uh, but to them, I say this. Shut up. Shut up, you mathsy idiot. No one cares about your numbers. We're also going to reform the House of Lords. It's, it's a real affront to democracy that in this day and age, a government can appoint people to sit in the House of Lords. And the first thing we're going to do to change that is to appoint 172 new people to sit in the House of Lords. Some of you might be saying... You know, won't that actually be more expensive than, than getting rid of the 66 MPs? Won't that cost more? To which I'd say, no, no. The Lords don't get a salary, they don't get a wage, they don't get anything. 
Nothing. Not a sausage. Not a bean. The Lords get nothing. Apart from £176 a day housing allowance, £84.50 a day food allowance, and a £75 a day office allowance. They cost us absolutely nothing, apart from £245.50 each per day. Anyway, the point is that we're going to get rid of 66 MPs who were chosen by the electorate, and we'll get to select, we can pick, 172 new Lords. So we're getting rid of people who we've got no idea about the qualifications of, but we get to pick people who were probably the best people available. And also it's three times as many. So in this new system, that's probably, you know, three times as good, isn't it? Really? I mean, the thing to remember about all of this is that five-year parliaments will really bring stability. And in order to help stability, I'm going to introduce a motion into the House of Commons so that we have Ten-year parliaments. In fact, in fact, you know, what would really, really get stability going would be if we just got rid of the elections altogether, wouldn't it? That would be much more stable. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs> hmm.